silicone collapsible lunch boxes and my stasher snack bags, but I've often been asked whether silicone is safe to be used for food cooking and storing, and how eco-friendly is it exactly? So I've done some thorough research and I'm going to share all that with you guys today. Let's go. A little intro about me. My name is Gloria and on this channel I love talking about issues pertaining to sustainability and personal well-being. So if you like these topics, give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Just a quick overview on what we make with silicone these days. Lunch boxes, bakeware, replacement of single-use Ziploc bags, water bottle, milk bottle heads, cooking utensils, toys, yep, toys for both kids and adults, menstrual cups, fake boobs. But first of all, what is silicone? Not to be mixed up with silicon without an E, nor silica, even though they're all related. Let's have a quick chemistry lesson. Silicon is the 14th element on the periodic table and one of the base materials that make up silica. Silica, meanwhile, is silicon dioxide, the most abundant material in the Earth's crust and most usually coming in the form of sand or quartz. Silicone is a synthetic polymer made up of silicon, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and perhaps other kinds of atoms as well. Basically, it is derived from silica. Silicone bakeware has received a lot of attention lately because it is highly functional. It can go from the oven to the fridge, to the dishwasher, to the microwave, and then to the freezer without skipping a beat. It is like that classmate who gets A's in everything and then runs a marathon for fun during the weekends and heads up the student council. As amazing silicone is, is it actually safe to use? The short answer is, it depends. It depends on the grade of silicone you use, the temperature you expose it to, and what you use it with. Let's talk about the quality and grade of silicone. There are so many types. For food, you should be looking at food grade silicone. It is a non-toxic type that doesn't contain any filler nor byproducts. But not all silicone is created equal. Some manufacturers, to reduce cost, add fillers to their products. Luckily, there's one simple way to tell. Choose a flat surface of the product, twist it, and if white shows through, that means fillers are added to the product. Pure silicone doesn't change color when twisted. Sasha, where I got my snack bag from, proudly uses pure platinum silicone, which contains no fillers nor anything from the petrochemical industry. I always bring my stash of food bag around so I could chuck in pastries or snacks on the go. Secondly, temperature. Since the use of silicone in cookware is fairly new, there hasn't been a lot of research done in this area. The good news is, absolutely little to no siloxanes, a potentially endocrine disrupting material, has been found to leach from silicone products that are not exposed to very high heat nor fat. But it is a different story when it comes to silicone exposed to high heat. In a post by Mary of nontoxicforhealth.com, which I have linked below, when exposed to high heat that is common when cooking food, silicone does leach siloxanes that are above health regulatory standards. My interpretation, for items like lunch boxes or water bottles, silicone is safe to use. Thanks to its flexibility, lightweight, and the fact that it has no open pores, it allows for easy cleaning and it is super convenient as a food container. But for bakeware, I would play it safe until more research has been done. After all, for baking, there are so many other good alternatives. My favorite is glass. And for cooking utensils, especially those that would always be in contact with hot surfaces, such as spatulas, I would go for wooden or bamboo options. Number three, the safety of silicone also depends on what you use it with. Research indicates that silicone is certainly very stable, but it is not entirely inert. In other words, there is possibility of leaching, but only when silicone is placed in contact with certain stimulating solutions. For example, one study tested the release of siloxanes from silicone nipples and bakeware into milk, baby formula, and a solution of alcohol and water. Nothing was released into the milk nor baby formula, but after 72 hours in an alcohol solution, several siloxanes were detected. So. Don't store tequila in your silicone water bottle, just to be safe. Okay, next, how sustainable is silicone? From my research, it is said on Mind Body Green that silicone has additives derived from the petrochemical industry. But looking at this very 90s website by a Dr. Denny Kriakos explaining how silicone is derived, nowhere do we see chemicals from the petrochemical industry added. So who is right? This goes back to the grade and quality of silicone we were talking about. Remember the pinch and twist test I mentioned? White showing through means that there are plastic fillers added. And there are probably other chemicals a manufacturer could add to cut costs to the product without an easy way for us to tell. 
But basically, pure high-quality food-grade silicone is not derived from the petrochemical industry. That's why it is important to get your products from brands that are trusted and are transparent about their silicone quality. I want to clarify something here. Even though silicone is derived from silica, sand, it is not as harmless as sand. It is not biodegradable and only certain recycling facilities could recycle it. Luckily, retailers like Life Zero in Hong Kong would happily take back your damaged silicone products so they could send to recyclers in bulk. Ultimately, although it is not perfect, I do think silicone is one of those materials that has the potential to replace so many single-use plastic items in our lives today. It has the convenience of plastic, as it is lightweight and flexible, yet it is way more durable, non-toxic, and kinder to our environment. Nowadays, I just always bring around a collapsible lunchbox with me, which fits in perfectly in a little purse or just in my bag. It doesn't take up a lot of space. And if there are leftovers from lunch or dinner, I just chuck it in. I just expand the lunchbox and I chuck it in, close the lid, and I just have it for lunch the next day. Okay, in conclusion and in summary. So silicone is definitely a way more eco-friendly and non-toxic option to plastic. Safety-wise, there is little evidence to show that silicone would leach harmful chemicals into our food under normal use. But the questions and uncertainty are still there, so it's worth keeping a close eye on the material as more research comes out. To be safe and environmentally friendly, I would use silicone products for food items in replacement of single-use plastic, since these food items won't be too hot anyway. For cooking and bakeware, I would avoid silicone for now since there are proven alternatives that do the job just as well and are proven to be safe, such as glass or ceramics. As for baby products such as teethers and pacifiers, there hasn't been much evidence saying that silicone is not safe to be used, but another option for you would be all-natural rubber, which is non-toxic and also very eco-friendly. If I have a baby, I would probably go for all-natural rubber, just saying, so up to you to choose as well. So I'm done talking today. What are your favorite silicone products for food? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to hear more from me, hit subscribe. I'm also on Instagram at the Gloria Year. Bye for now.